Okay, I want to discuss three things in this video. I want to discuss gene transfer, gene flow, and also transformation, which is one of the types of gene transfer, the three types of gene transfer that I'm going to be talking about in these videos. So the first thing I want to introduce is this idea of gene flow. So we all pretty much know vertical gene flow because that's just the generational passing of genes from parents to offspring. So that's kind of the typical thing we associate with um, gene transfer in, in our lives as humans, of course. Um, but the interesting thing is a lot of microbes, bacteria, um, are able to do what's called horizontal gene transfer. Okay, And basically, that's just the transfer of DNA from unrelated cells and among cells of the same uh, among cells that are members of the same species. Okay, so it, basically what I'm saying here is just that bacteria and microbes are able to not only transfer genes vertically through generational passing, so you can um, you can go through binary fission and create an identical cell, but you can also uh, and, but you can also um, take up DNA from the environment um, from other cells, and you know that can be incorporated into the genome as well. So. And what that does basically is it improves the competitiveness of the cell and it can also lead to the rapid spread of antibiotic resistance. So that's one of the ways antibiotic resistance is spread um, among even members of different species. So it's not as common as vertical gene transfer. So again, that's the most common. That's the one we all know. Um, it's more frequent in micro microbes. It involves plasmids in some cases, um, bacteriophages in other cases, which are viruses um, that, infect the that infect bacterial cells. Um, transposable elements and the main thing the, thing, the point I'm really trying to drive home here is that they can be exchanged, they can exchange DNA with other species. So it's not just um, members of the same species, members of other species can also exchange certain genes. So it's kind of an important take home point. The next point I want to talk about is gene transfer. And basically, like I said, there's really three types that I'm going to talk about. And that's transformation, which is the uptake of DNA directly from the median. And then I'm going to talk about conjugation, which is that's also known as bacterial sex. So basically you have this F-factor plasmid, which contains these fertility genes. And there are proteins for the formation of the F-pillus um, for the transfer of DNA. So there's, um, there's a, some have, they're called F-positive, and some are, are not F-positive. Um, the F-positive ones basically are able to form the sex pillus and transfer the genetic material, the DNA. Then I'm going to talk about transduction, which is just viruses. Basically, those are, like I said before, bacteriophages, which are viruses. And um, some of these phages can actually get confused, so to speak, and pick up bacterial genes instead of transferring the viral genes. Instead of transferring the viral DNA, it will transfer actual bacterial genes. So those are the three that I'm going to talk about in depth, and I'm going to start with transformation in this video. So transformation is one of the types of gene transfer that we just talked about and basically it's just a process of importing free DNA okay and the free DNA can either be put there by you know a scientist in a lab or it may come from dead cells or something like that um, in the in the environment in the natural environment so you can import the DNA into the bacterial cells and that's basically known as transformation and this many species have the ability to import the DNA fragments and uh, plasmids released from dead cells, but not all of them. Okay, other species, and a good example, of course, is E. coli, which basically they don't possess the equipment to need it to import the DNA naturally. Okay, so they don't do it naturally. Um, they actually require artificial manipulation. So several things you can do as a scientist in the lab or several things that, um, you know, you can do to manipulate these cells. And basically you can do these artificial manipulations and drive the DNA into these cells. So gram-positive organisms, okay, transform DNA using what's known as a translocosome complex, okay? And the growth phase dependent assembly of the translocosome complex um, across cell membranes is required for the cell to become competent. So basically we're using the term competent here just to mean that they're able to take up DNA. They're able to transform DNA from the environment, take it up into the cell. And basically a competent cell can import the DNA and the DNA fragments and incorporate them into its genome. So if you're competent, you're able to not only take up the DNA, but you're also able to incorporate it into the genome. Um, some artificial transformations can be, uh, manipulations can also drive the DNA into the cell, like I said, in the laboratory. Um, techniques for perturbing the membrane chemically, so you could use calcium chloride or what's known as electroporation. Electroporation is probably the more common one, and from the term you might guess that it's basically a brief electrical pulse that allows you to shoot the DNA across the membrane. It's very rapid. It's a nice, it's actually a nice technique. And 
basically what happens is these chemicals and the, this processes alter the membrane. Okay, they alter the membrane which makes the cell chemically competent and allows DNA to enter. So this is basically the gist of transformation. And of course, don't forget, we have the different types of gene transfer. We have three types that we're going to talk about. So transformation, conjugation, transduction. All right, so this is one of three, and the next ones will be coming.